Right now, the day's biggest news stories from the biggest perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. One, two, three. Oh yeah, what's up Las Vegas? Good morning. It is the Vegas Take Sharp and Shapiro on a very rainy Tuesday, by the way. It makes me more tired when I leave my place in the morning and I see it raining in Vegas. It is a little bit bizarre. And then I get the allergies. And then the first thing that comes to my mind is, oh, my God, do I have the coronavirus? I better go to the local supermarket and stock up on water and toilet paper because every single time J.D. comes over, I'm out of toilet paper. J.D. is here as well, by the way. He's here on time. And uh, by the way, I must say that was a great commercial that you recorded yesterday. I, I must give you credit. That yeah. was very catchy. It, it was actually almost yes. too good. Yeah, it was. It was incredible. I'm, I'm freaking myself out just yeah. just hearing how awesome that sounded. Well, you're not the only I was person. Very surprised. You're not the only person that's freaking out this morning. There are many people, not just in Las Vegas, but across the country and the world, that are freaking out. I mean, for Christ's sake, Italy is on lockdown. I mean, this coronavirus thing is, you know, I think it's somewhere in the middle of where people are overreacting, and then the Trump administration. I think it's somewhere in the middle of that. It is serious. There's no question about that. This is a serious situation, and people are going to say, well, the flu is 10 times worse, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and it is. But the problem with this virus is there is no cure. So if you catch the virus and you are at an age and you have other health complications, you are in huge trouble. And that is why people have died. And that is why we are going to learn more and more people are going to contract this virus. And now it is getting to the point where politicians could be in trouble. But I will say this, Brian. Elderly people who have health problems do tend to die. Well, yes, that's a very blanket statement. What I'm trying to say. Like, for example, in Washington, that wasn't just a nursing home. That was a acute care facility which is basically a step below hospice. I understand the, that. The people that were in, in the net, we've had 26 deaths in the United States, and 22 of those have occurred in Washington State at that, at, in, at, in Kirkland at that particular facility. Now, there's rumors, listen, a lot of people are not getting tested. I don't understand the reason for that, including the president of the United States. There's no excuse for that. What we are learning is that the president did not get this coronavirus test after Air Force One trip with, with an exposed congressman. President Trump was not tested for the coronavirus after shaking hands and flying on Air Force One with a Republican congressman that was exposed to the coronavirus. Now, this is the thing that is incredible to me because they did a press conference yesterday and Trump was asked a lot of questions, shouted out a lot of questions, just walks off the stage, lets the vice president respond for him. And once again, Vice President Mike Pence, jerk circle Pence, uh, is answering questions. He said this in response to being asked about President Trump and the coronavirus. Have a listen to this. Thank you very much. Have you been tested? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Has he been tested? Have you been tested? I have not been tested for the coronavirus. Has the President been tested? Has the President been tested? Contact with people who were in proximity to somebody who had the virus. Let me uh, be sure and get you an answer to that. I honestly don't know the answer to the question, uh, but, um, but we'll refer that question and we will get you an answer from the White House uh, physician uh, very quickly. Circle jerk. Thank you, Mr. Pence. We appreciate that. You sound like. Mr. Prince, you sound like you are very knowledgeable of what's going on. You don't even know if the frickin' president of the United States ha- has been tested. What a, what a disgrace he is, really. And I think I saw a poll that 45% of Republicans would support him as president, the next president. What a joke. And by the way, he was pressed further on this. I'm talking about Vice President Mike Pence. Guy sounds like he has absolutely no idea what he is talking about. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Vice President, do you know if the president's been tested? I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll answer that question after my prayer. Holy smokes. Have a listen to this. He was pressed further. 
You just said that you have not been tested. You said you don't know if the president has been tested. But today we learned that the president has interacted with two lawmakers who have interacted with someone who is positive for coronavirus. So why not get tested? Well, uh, I, I just simply don't know what the White House physician has recommended to the president, but I promise you we'll get you that information. When do you think you can let us know if the president has been tested? We'll, we'll let you know tonight. Okay. Right away. Yeah, but look, this is a, um, obviously the White House physician, is, their, their directive is to see to the health and well-being of the President of the United States, and uh, we'll get you a very direct answer on that. I've, I've, had no, I've had no recommendation that I would be tested. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. You sound very knowledgeable once again on this. Uh, please make sure you pray tonight, because we know that's number one on his priority list, not knowing whether the President's been tested, not knowing why they haven't been tested. You're, the, you're the, supposed to be the head of this whole thing, and you know nothing. I'll tell you what's important to Melania Trump, though. Money? Uh, her tennis court. Did you hear about this? She's defending uh, the work on the White House tennis court during coronavirus fears. Melania Trump now responding after a tweet about building a tennis court at the White House amid this coronavirus outbreak. And in the wake of deadly Tennessee tornadoes. And she received a lot of backlash online. The first lady encouraged others to do some good in their local communities after being criticized for posting photos of herself on March 5th in a construction hard hat during a building of a tennis pavilion at the White House. That's right. All this going on in the world. We got this coronavirus scare. We got these tornadoes that killed a bunch of innocent poor people. And what does Melania Trump decide to do? She decides to walk on the grounds of the White House while they're building this stupid tennis pavilion for her. It's just unbelievable. And by the way, she, she also stated that she thinks she's the most bullied person in the world. She wants people to feel sorry for her. Hey, guess what? You married Donald Trump. You get what you paid for. You deserve what you get paid for, I should say. You deserve what's coming to you, Melania. Actress Mia Farrow was among those who responded to the first lady's remarks about her stupid tennis pavilion. She said 29 people were killed by a tornado in Tennessee. The world is shuddering as a pandemic expands. And what is a tennis pavilion? Another adds, unreal. The White House did a quicker job building Melania's tennis pavilion than getting tests out for the coronavirus. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. Another tweeter, Twitter, tweeter, Twitter says, in case you didn't notice, the world is in the midst of a corona pandemic. Another person wrote, adding that tweet, seems a little out of touch. Another tweet, Trump used the hashtag be best in reference to her campaign against online billing, which is also drawn criticism as her husband, President Donald Trump, frequently mocks others on Twitter. She said in 2018 that she can be considered the most bullied person in the world before adding one of them. <laughs> the White House broke ground on this tennis pavilion back in October, by the way, and has said the private donations and no public funds will be used for the project. So it seems what's on Melania's mind? What's on her mind? In the, in the days where people have died from this horrible tornado and there was a coronavirus scare, she actually took time out of her day and took some aids with her and took some pictures in this stupid tennis pavilion. She probably sucks at tennis, too, by the way. Takes these pictures of her on the construction site, decides to post them on social media, oh, she's, and then says she's, she's the most bullied person in the world. It's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. This would be like... Hold Wait, on, let that, me finish. That's the most ridiculous thing you've ever this seen. This would be like... What, what would people say today, just hypothetically speaking, what would people say? We have this coronavirus breakout. People are scared. People have a right to be scared. People are worried. And in the days that this is happening, Michelle Obama goes on the grounds and is bragging about, oh, I don't know, a new basketball court that's built for her husband. What would Republicans say about that? They would be trashing her. They would be all over her. But when it comes to Melania Trump, oh, no, sacred ground. We can't talk about Melania Trump, the first lady with nude pictures out on the Internet. No, we can't talk about that. That's, that, that's off grounds. I think not. You know what I want the first lady doing? I want the first lady talking to those families who lost loved ones in that horrible tornado. That's what she should be tweeting out right now. That's what she should be focused on. Or how about the first lady 
meeting with people with the coronavirus, and I know they're in quarantine. How about Wait, meeting sorry, with those I'm, families? I'm, I'm meeting with the people with the coronavirus? How about meeting those families? Oh, the families, yeah. okay. How about talking not, to those not, families? Not like shaking hands with someone who's well, infected you, with the you coronavirus. Can't, you can't do oh, that. Okay. You can't All do right. that. They're in quarantine. Just confirming. But what about you know reaching out to those people? I mean, this is just unbelievable. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. But she's talking about a tennis pavilion. And then we have the Florida congressman, DUI Matt, also known as Matt Gates. Remember this idiot? He wore a gas mask on the House floor. And now he is in self-isolation. Why is he in self-isolation? Because he had contact with this guy who has the coronavirus at CPAC. But you know what? He put himself in quarantine. I think he put himself in quarantine for two weeks because he just wants two weeks off. He wants a little mini vacation in his home. You know why I say that? Because TMZ is reporting and they have pictures of him just before, just before he put himself in quarantine. He already knew he was going to do it. There are pictures of him eating tacos in West Palm Beach, Florida at this local taco joint. It's called Rocco's Tacos. He's out there with a female laughing it up with her. Eyewitnesses are talking about it. There's pictures of him. So obviously, the only reason why he's putting himself in quarantine is because the man wants two weeks off from work. He is an absolute prick and a moron. He is the definition of white privilege. DUI Matt added again. Remember, this was the man who was mocking the coronavirus, and then one of his constituents die. And then he feels so sorry about that, and after going to this Rocco's Taco Shop, decides to put himself in self-quarantine. This guy, Matt Gates, should be fired immediately. Right, he's in he's in self-quarantine because he came in touch with the one person who was infected with I the understand. coronavirus who attended CPAC. So and did I Paul Gosar, that. so did Mark Meadows. Mm-hmm. Three different Republican Congress people decided to do that. No, it's actually not three, it's, it's six. Okay, well, but, uh, as far but, as I knew, it was three yesterday. Must okay. have, they must have increased it to six. But that's why. It's not, it's okay, not because— moments, moments before he decided to put himself in self quarantine. That doesn't Hold mean on. anything to me. Uh, well, let me explain to you why it means something to me. He knew that he was putting himself in self-quarantine. Hold okay. on, let me finish. He knew why he was putting himself in self-quarantine. He knew. He knew exactly what he was going to be doing the rest of the day. So what does he decide to do? Instead of immediately putting himself in self-quarantine— he decides to have a nice little date lunch with somebody out there at the taco shop. It, it shows you a frame of mind that he does not take this seriously, even though his own constituents have died. Some of them have died. He doesn't take it seriously. I believe some of these Republicans are not taking it seriously, and they think it's just the Democrats and it's a hoax, and they're just doing it to try to get at President Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a hoax. People have died. More people, sadly, are going to die. There are still people that are stuck on that ship. That docked in Oakland. This is not a joke. This is a serious situation. And we have the vice president of the United States that doesn't even know what the hell he's talking about. And Trump put him in charge of everything. He doesn't even know why he hasn't been tested. He doesn't know whether the president has been tested. He is an absolute buffoon. The number to call, 702-257-5396. Again, if you want to be a part of this conversation, now would be the time. Give us a buzz, 702-257-5396. Nine six. Why don't we start with Dr. Doug? Dr. Doug, you are first up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Dr. Doug? Doug, are you there? Did we lose Doug? 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Dave. Dave, you are next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Yes, I think that what Mike Pence did was ter- perfectly reasonable. And if you take a look at what did happen with Michelle Obama... There was an H1N1 flu virus that did happen under Obama's watch. He didn't even come through with any funding until after 1,000 people died. After 1,000 people died, then he starts getting involved. Not once did they ever go to any of the victims. They didn't spend any time at all with any of the victims. And whereas you're saying that Melania Trump should be spending time with these guys, and are you, are you saying H1N1 deaths in the United States or worldwide, the, the thousand number? In mark? the United States. Yeah, well, there's been 26 so far for the coronavirus. Right. And uh, yet at the same time under Obama, Obama, they were off partying. They were having a good time. They didn't do a goddamn thing while the virus yeah, was going I, I don't on. particularly have a huge issue with Melania Trump's, you know, representing or supporting something that she considers to be positive in these trying times. I don't have an issue with that, nor do I think that she should be 
24-7, round-the-clock meeting with the families of coronavirus patients, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, don't, have, I don't have a huge problem okay, well, I, with I, what Melania Trump did, nor, nor do I find it to be ridiculous. And I actually think she's probably a decent tennis player, considering the fact she's about you know five foot seven. she's in good shape, she's linear. So I'm, I'm guessing that that, Man, we, that, that that was one of the worst takes I've heard in a long time from you, Brian. Okay, so can I respond now, Dave? Would you like me to respond to what you said? Go for it. Okay. First of all, uh, this virus that allegedly killed 1,000 people in the United States, and you claim that Barack Obama did nothing about it, I don't believe you. Uh, I'm sorry. I just don't believe you. We would have heard about this on Fox News. We would have heard about this on right-wing radio. It would have been all over the place. So I'm sorry, sir, with all due respect— I don't think you're being honest or you don't know the facts. That's number one. Number two, even if that was true, and I don't think it is, by the way. Let me be on record as saying that. Even if it was true, it does not excuse the facts that you have right-wingers out there wearing gas masks uh, on the House floor mocking the coronavirus. It doesn't excuse the fact that the Vice President of the United States, who is in charge of the coronavirus, that's right, he's in charge, the President put him in charge, clueless, not even able to answer the most basic questions of why he hasn't been tested or if the president has been tested and it doesn't excuse the fact that melania trump the first lady seems to care more the last few days about her stupid tennis pavilion than the people that have died in a tornado this week and the people that have died from the coronavirus so with all due respect dave i appreciate the phone call but you have i I would love to know the actual facts of what you just said because i do not believe you 702-257-5396 is the number to call Again, that number, 257-5396. Let's go to Scott. Scott, you're next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Scott? What's up, gentlemen? Real quick, I just want to kind of change the subject slightly. Uh, Sylvia Brown, she's a psychic, and I don't believe either way or whatever, but it's pretty interesting in this book she wrote a while back. If I can read it real quick, it says, In around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and the bronchial tubes and resisting all known treatments. Almost more baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived. Attack again 10 years later and then disappear completely. And that was published in a book uh, a while. I'm not really sure when it was well, published. Is it was that the edge of darkness? Ago. Pretty fascinating, though. I just thought you guys might want to hear it. Yeah, I've heard about that. That is that is pretty wild. That is pretty crazy. I guess she was right, whoever wrote this book. But um you know, I hope I hope she's right. At well, she's the end, right about part of it. At the end, you just said it goes away completely. I, I hope that's true. You know, yeah. I, I certainly do. Uh, wow, stuff. Yeah. That's all I got, brother. Thank you. All right, yeah, thank you, Scott. Call. Hey, Brian, this this is how crazy the the panic is across the world. So, about 15 minutes ago, they just released information that in Iran, 44 people were drinking. They, were, they, they thought they had the cure for the coronavirus. They were, they were convinced by some of them. I don't know if that means, means they're very smart or not very smart, but a bootleg alcohol vendor in Iran was serving people toxic methanol alcohol, and 44 Iranians died thinking it was the cure to the coronavirus. Well, maybe they're up there with 99 versions in heaven. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to... Uh, Dr. Nate. Dr. Nate, you are next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? What's up, Dr. Nate? Yeah, yeah, Brian. Uh, You and I could go and walk into a room with 50 people that are infected with the virus, and we could kiss each and every one of them. Of course, I would kiss them first. You would kiss them second. And and at the end of this, uh, a mouthwash and all that, the chances of either one of you, as long as you're healthy and in good health, you sound like you're in good health, you're a basketball referee and everything, I can guarantee you... You might come down with a little bit of mere you know, flu-like systems. The flu kills thirty to sixty thousand people in this country every year. Those numbers might go up a little bit. Everybody's working on this. You know, the media they just keep on trying to get my guy, and so everything's going to be fine. We're going to take care of this. Go about your normal life. One thing I will say: people are practicing a lot better hygiene, and I think. That 2020 may go down on records as one of the healthiest years in the United States. All right, I have to ask you a question, though. You said everybody's going after your guy, and, and you're saying it's not a big deal. First of all, I wouldn't say that to those that have been in quarantine that are still stuck on that ship that are away from their families. I wouldn't say that to the families that have lost loved ones. Yes, you can correlate that to the flu, and you're right. The flu is extremely serious. You're right. Thirty to 60,000 people do die on a yearly basis, and it's very sad. But that being said, there's no cure 
for coronavirus. As far as the president goes and as far as leadership goes, this could be a positive thing for the president. Forget about your thoughts on what Democrats are doing. Forget about your thoughts on the ultra liberals out there that are going after the president that are saying inappropriate things like they're calling this the Trump virus. This is an opportunity for the president of the United States to show tremendous leadership. This could help him, not hurt him. Did you see the press conference yesterday? Did you see him walk off that stage, not answer any questions? You cannot tell me, Dr. Nate, with a straight face that the president is showing tremendous leadership during this difficult time. Well, that's uh, that's left to be seen. Uh, well, thus he, far, it's thus far. Let's just let me make it a fair question. Thus far, do you think the president has shown and the vice president have shown tremendous leadership during this difficult time? Yes, I think they have. Really, what they have they have. done? And what have they done to show tremendous leadership? He walks off the stage yesterday. The vice president can't answer the most basic questions. Trump refused to answer well, any were questions. Well, screaming at him like a, a gaggle of No, fire. they uh, – excuse me. The, the, I, we played the audio. It was a very simple question. No, they, were, they were screaming. There was okay. about 15 different then, reporters you know, screaming I mean, at him, Brian. And then, you know, there's no reason, there and was then, no reason for him to answer that question. There was I mean, no reason you – know, hold on a second. There's no reason for the vice president of the United States – to answer a question such as, have you ever received the, you, came have you later, received the, the coronavirus? Came out later I'm asking you a question. Been you're saying okay. there's, you, hold on, I, I, I want to ask you, you're saying there's no reason for the vice president or the president of the United States to answer the basic question, have they're you been tested? Men. They're healthy men. They didn't answer the question. Yeah. She, he, Trump yeah, wouldn't answer the question. The White House put out a thing later saying yes. All right, but, hasn't been tested. All right, Dr. Nate, I appreciate the phone call, but you're not answering my question. 702 Two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Janice. Janice, you're next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Janice? Hi, JD. Hi. JD. Hi. Hi, JD. I'm so happy to speak with you. I always listen to you on this stage. I'm not so crazy for Brian. That uh, breaks my he heart. Doesn't, I know how to speak to people. I well, what do you mean? That, what what, 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 what you. do you mean? I don't know how to speak to people. Yeah, I'm not talking to you, Brian. But I'm talking to you. What do you mean? I, I don't, don't know care. how to speak to people. Well, I do care. I want to talk with uh, someone that knows what they're talking about. Oh, okay. Well, why don't Maybe. I know what? Well, why don't I know what I'm talking about? Tell so me. Why don't you hang up like you do to other people? Well, why don't you answer I my question? Speak with JD, I why don't ask for you. Well, you're the one who brought me up. I didn't bring you up. You brought me up. I'm talking to JD. Well, I'm talking. Well, too bad. I'm talking to you. What do I not know what, what I'm talking about? Do, what, what we have to quarantine. Is we need to quarantine mouth. you. That's what we need that's to do. We need to qu- you have. Uh, see. Let okay. Me speak with JD. Yeah, I think that's a good sound. How about thing. we quarantine you, you your mouth? A very good sound JD, bite. You, you need to put you. soap and water in your mouth, Janice. I like Janice. to go one on one with you and quarantine okay. your mouth. Go ahead. Trust me, you ain't going one on one with me. You're the last woman I want to go one on one with. You're the last woman on the planet I want to go one on one with. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Janice. Very good call, Janice. Thank you. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Andre. Andre, you are next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? What's up, Andre? Yeah, good morning, man. Um, you know, t- to be honest with you, man, Brian, you you uh, you know, you're you're always when the callers call in, you're always calling them buffoon, and they don't know what they're uh, talking and, and about. Why, and, and why? Why? <clears throat> why? Why? Well, let, 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 let me finish, and then because they support Donald it, Trump. It, it, nope, that's not it, why. <laughs> well, yeah, but listen, but. But then when they give you facts, you tell them that they're not facts. Okay, so tell me. And my well, question to you is, to, no, no, be no, specific. And, 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 and then you say. And then I'm you say, up against a hard break, hey, Andre. Andre. Andre, honestly, what that guy said was wrong. Obama declared it a, 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 a state of emergency before anyone died when there was 20 H1 uh, N one cases and no deaths in the United States. That guy Andre, was Andre, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm going to give you ample time because I have to take a break. Is that fair? Fair enough. Okay, I promise you, you'll be the first one I get to on the other side of the break. So we're going to take enough. a quick break. And thank you, Andre. We're going to take a quick break. We will get to all your calls when we come back at 257-5396. Take a quick break. Be back right after this. You're listening to The Vegas Take. All right, welcome back. It is The Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro, so glad you could join us. By the way, we had a caller on the line. Uh, I believe it was a few calls ago. And uh, he said that Barack Obama was responsible for 1,000 deaths. And said that he did nothing about it. So JD did a little bit of research, and yeah, I called that guy a buffoon. I don't actually. I don't think I called him a name. I just said I didn't believe him. I thought he was lying. Well, guess what? It turns out I'm right. JD, would you like to explain? Well, you, you explained it. He didn't say Barack Obama was, was responsible for a thousand deaths. What he said was Obama didn't put together any financing to combat the virus until there were a thousand deaths in the United States, and that is just categorically false. After 20 cases were diagnosed in the United States of the H1N1 swine flu and there was no deaths, he actually declared a state of emergency. So that, that is 
extremely false. So somebody called up without facts, but I suppose I just should just let them roll on their tongue and spout out nonsense. See, ladies and gentlemen, that is what we call a liar, someone who is either ill-informed or ignorant. 702-257-5396. I said I would go back to Andre. I wanted to give him ample time. Uh, Andre, the floor is yours. Yeah, just real quick, man. I'm not going to take too much of your time. But, you know, like, like I said, everything, you know, J.D. and Brian, everything, you know, and, and I'm a Trump supporter. You guys know that, man. But everything As is am I. politicized. You know, everything is politicized. Now it's Trump's fault. The gentleman that, that they called that you're mentioning was saying, you know, when that happened, it was Obama's fault. It's nobody's fault, man. These are things that happen in life, man. You know, what I, I didn't mean? blame Trump. That- Andre, I didn't blame Trump for the right. coronavirus. I've never but, have. But, but, but so the only thing that we could actually criticize is how somebody handles a situation. And stuff, and of course. And their response. Of course. I, mean? now, I agree. Now, 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 if you're fair minded, you understand that they're trying to do the best with what they have and, what, and how they can. You know what I mean? Just so like, can I ask you something then, Andre? Uh, yeah. And by the way, for the record, I have never blamed Trump for the coronavirus. I haven't called it the Trump virus. But you, you, before we went to break, you said, you know, why do you call somebody a buffoon if, if they have facts? Well, there's a perfect example, Andre, of what I'm talking about. Somebody who called up 10 minutes ago who made up nonsense, and, you know, I didn't even call them a name. I said I didn't believe them. Right. Uh, right. Uh, that, oh. is, that is a moron. Hey, good for you, Brian. Okay? That is a right. moron. That is somebody that is ill-informed and ignorant. Way to hold back and, when, and not call them a name. And when somebody says something that was ill-informed or ignorant, I'm going to call them out on it on this show. I don't mind people that disagree. Uh, we probably disagree, Andre, on a lot of things. Right. But but that's but fine. you got to understand, everybody, everybody's not going to articulate every word the way they should and say everything. You know, well, I can't as, do as anything about should, that. So they're going to misspeak. Andre, so, so. I, Andre, there's no evidence that he misspoke. I believe that he truly believes that, what he said. And listen, we don't know for sure, Andre. I understand what you're saying, but I can only go by what people say. You know, people call in, they talk for 20 seconds. I talk for three hours. I'm sure I make a lot of mistakes every day. It's not so much about believing what what he says. It's about Brian thinking that he was using it as a gotcha moment and being totally incorrect. Well, he's wrong. The Uh, bottom line is he's wrong. Well, I I, I mean, and I'll get off the phone. I'll just say this, man. This this, this too shall pass. You know, like I, I, I walk around in no fear, man, because I'm a, I'm a man of God. I'm a man of faith. I walk by faith and not by sight. You know what I mean? So I'm going about my business as I, as I do, as I have for the last, you know, 49 years I've been on this earth. You know, I take precautions, but I keep it pushing, man. I keep it pushing because— And I would never so take that—and that, I would never take that away from you, Andre. You have you know, that right. So, 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 the, so the fear that the media is trying to instill in, in, in society right now, it's, it's over the top. It's ridiculous, and, and, and it's crazy. And people are reacting— because uh, you know they 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 have no 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 faith. There's no, there's no nothing. You okay, know but I'm here's my anyway. problem. Okay, but here's my problem with the word faith, and here's my definition of crazy. The person that is in charge of all this is a man in 2000 who said that smoke didn't kill people. He's also a man that has tried to pray off certain things, and people have died for it. I'm talking about right, Mike Pence. Right, but, 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 but but if you're being honest with your audience, that's also a man that you haven't liked from day one. You well, I told you why I don't like him. I, I, okay, but hold on. I've told you why I don't like him. And, and right. that is one of the main reasons, because he puts his religion before policy. People died in that uh, syringe AIDS epidemic because he tried to pray it off. People died because of that. In the year 2000, when I was eight years old, okay, eight years old, we're talking 30 years ago, I knew cigarettes were bad for people. Okay, in no the question. year, in the year, right, any logical person would, would agree with that. In the year 2000, Pence was a politician, and he believed cigarettes didn't kill people. This is a stupid human being. Mike Pence is an ignorant buffoon. Andre, okay. I'm sorry, man. I mean, we can disagree on that, but the no, evidence— we're good. We're good. We're not, like I said, I, I don't remember that, but if you said that, yeah, that's how— It's on funny. the record, Andre. Listen, man, I appreciate the phone call. I don't, yeah. mind, I don't mind disagreeing with you. You sound reasonable this morning, and I don't, I don't have a problem with that. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Again, that number, 257-5396. Yeah, call, Andre. Let's go to Alan. Alan, you are next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? What's up, Alan? Uh, I just wanted to put in my two cents— uh, I'm 69 years old. I've never had the flu in my entire life. And I will tell you real quickly, when in the military, uh, there was a flu outbreak. Three quarters of my barracks got it. I was in the quarter that did not get it. I breathed the same air, ate the same food. Uh, So what I'm trying to say is everybody has an immune system. So what you do, what you put in your body that will affect your body, that will deplete your immune system, may be the difference between you, you're getting the flu and you're not getting the flu. So 
What I'm suggesting is people call your doctor, ask what you can do to boost your immune system, what foods can you eat, what should you avoid, and if at least then you can feel like you're doing right. something that's in your control so that you won't get the flu or the coronavirus. Well, well, well so, said, Alan. I agree. Yeah, that, that's that's good advice. And, and are you a doctor, by the way? No, but I got doctors <laughs> in the family. You so sound like I, one. I appreciate that. Well, Alan, listen, I appreciate that advice. I'm glad at 69 you're extremely healthy. It sounds like you're doing all the right things, and I, I appreciate the phone call. By the way, before we move on to any other— Great call, Alan. Before we move on to any other calls, uh, I forgot to set up uh, some of the guests we have coming up here. It's going to be very interesting. This woman accused Bill Clinton of rape back in 1998. She has a new book out. Uh, her name is Juanita Broderick. So she's going to be joining us in the 10 a.m. hour to talk a little bit about that. The uh, commissioner of the West Coast Conference, Gloria Navarez, will be joining us in hour number three. Also, the first NBA player deaf, legally deaf, the first NBA player. He's got a new book out. His name is Lance Allred, and he's going to be joining us in studio in hour number three. So a lot of interesting guests. We're talking about the coronavirus. We're talking about the press conference that was held yesterday. The president of the United States and the vice president. The vice president not knowing why he hasn't been tested, not knowing why the president hasn't been tested, even though he may have been in contact with someone with the virus and a lawmaker. And now there are six lawmakers that have put themselves in quarantine. Now, keep in mind, Donald Trump is a known germaphobe. He constantly uses hand sanitizer. He is very, yes. he's a very, he does, he doesn't drink alcohol. He's well, very good, aware though. of his health. That's good. He, he's not in the best shape, but he does keep his hands clean and he has for a well, long time. Well, that's good. So we have a president who's a known germaphobe and we have a vice president who's a known homophobe. So they make a really good team. The number to call 702-257-5396. Again, that number to call 257-5396. Let's get back to the calls and let's go to Wayne. Wayne, you're next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on, man? Hey, what's up, Wayne? Good morning, Brian. Good morning. Um, that one girl that called in, uh, she doesn't understand that you have an, an executive education, so to speak. you got the right to kind of play around with things. And she needs to learn a lesson sometime. Maybe she'll call back. But anyway, Brian, <laughs> there's two questions I want to ask you about this. Yes, sir. Vi this virus. Yes, sir. I know a lot. I, like I was trying to tell you before, I know a lot more about it than I lead on to. If I ever had a chance to talk about it, you might think I was a doctor. When I'm not, I'm not. Mm -hmm. But there is a there is a, a vaccination for it. We just have to get it out into the right strain, so to speak. And that one doctor that called in, he's giving you the facts. Stay clean, get, uh, um, eat good food and things like that. I got two qu quick questions for you, Brian. Yeah, go ahead. One, you don't know who I am. I was at the Bin Laden raid when we went after Bin Laden. And after, uh, you know what I'm saying? Wait, wait, hold on. You were one of the people that went into Bin Laden's home? Yes, sir. I was flying a helicopter there, buddy. And Whoa. when they got the one helicopter, I set mine down and went into the building through the correct door. Well, first of all, let me tell you, thank you for your service and thank you for getting that son of a bitch because uh, that guy was responsible for killing so many innocent people on September 11th and so many uh, innocent lives. And I'm so glad we got that bastard. Uh, so thank you for your service and to all the other brave men and women who were uh, in charge right. that day. All them guys that were there are the greatest. They're all the best mm -hmm. of my friends, bro. Did you see Ben Laden's body? Yes. You did see Ben Laden's body. What did what what what? what uh... I touched it, dude. You did. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. So you were you were you were flying the the pilot. Uh, you were the pilot. You were flying. You were flying that helicopter. Not the one that crashed. Okay. Now I got you. Filmed, I filmed the one that wrecked, dude. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yep. but anyway, let me ask you this. Then. Yes. Um, w when you when you heard about the Bin Laden raid, do you think uh, Obama was responsible for it, or was it covered up? Why was SEAL Team so mad at Obama, and then we shut up? You tell me. I don't know. Because uh, Bin Laden was dead before Obama got in office, my friend. That's the gospel truth, and I'll put my right hand on the well, Bible. Well, you just said you saw Bin Laden's body that day. I'm so confused now. Because Obama didn't call for the attack. It was done before Obama was even in office. It was covered up. We didn't want, let's use, you know what the government does out there, Brian? They covered it up because they did not want them guys to know that he was really dead, to keep them confused. And All right, so well, listen, I, I appreciate the call, Wayne. Uh, thank you for the phone call. Um, 
<sighs> I want to give this guy the benefit of the doubt, but uh, that was getting a little weird there. So, I actually would like to cue up some conspiracy theory music if that's possible. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Again, 257-5396. We're not talking about bin Laden. Uh, obviously, we're talking about the coronavirus, the president's response, uh, the lack of answers that uh, Vice President Pence had yesterday, making himself look like a complete fool. Maybe he'll pray that press conference away. I suppose that's possible. And we're taking your calls at 257 257- Five three nine six. Let's go to Wayne E. Wayne E. Thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? What's up, Wayne E.? Hey, at the beginning of the segment, you guys were talking about Melania showing off her her tennis court. That's correct. The pavilion, yes, tennis pavilion. It's called right. And the and the um, example you gave was what if Melania? Or excuse me, what if um, Michelle Obama? Michelle, yes, correct. What if she had uh, had a, a basketball court and said, "Hey, you know." If she was taking pictures and doing the same thing, mm-hmm. um, honestly, I think that it's the president's way of saying, "Hey, live your life, move on." Exactly. Be vigilant. Wash your hands. You know, don't go crazy and buy eight months worth of water and toilet paper. Normally, but, normally, I would, I would, I would, I would say that's a great point you made. But here's my problem. Well, I have a lot of problems. If they, if they argued that with Obama, if they made the same argument, you would agree with that, correct? I think, uh, no, I disagree with you. I think that during a time like this where there was a, a day after people died in this horrible tornado and this coronavirus, I think it is inappropriate. Now, she could live her life. She could go on the tennis courts and play a little bit of tennis or or talk to her friends, whatever the case may be. But to actually take the time to post this stuff on social media and brag about her stupid tennis pavilion, in my personal opinion, is inappropriate. And here's why, Wayne, I think she has zero credibility. She, as you know, since her husband took office, she has been a champion for cyberbullying, right? She wants to get rid of all this cyberbullying. Well, guess what? It is her own husband that is the cyber bullier in chief himself that's not even true Brian. she he has just, he zero just credibility Bri- he responds no that's not true yes, he does not just that's not true no, bull- he does not just attack people bullies really? just really? yes really? yes he, he gets a, he gets attacked and he responds not true in kind. not true that's not bullying not true that, that's just countering so There's you mean to tell there. me right now that the president of the united states isn't cyber bullying is that what you're going to say on this show huh not that, me, no no i'm not talking to you wayne i know you agree <laughs> with me on this one uh jd hang on wayne J.D., you mean to tell me that you could look me in the eye right now and say the president does not cyberbully? Is that your position? Brian. Answer the question. My definition of bullying is different than yours. That's not what I asked you. My definition of bullying is going after someone and leveraging your power to belittle them. In my opinion, Donald Trump does not go after anybody. Donald Trump Donald, doesn't Don, leverage Don, his power Donald, to bully? Donald Trump <laughs> is consistently attacked and he responds to whoever attacks him. Does he go low oh. when, that, when that takes place? Absolutely. All right, I'll let Wayne. But do. I, but I don't, I don't, I don't think that he just seeks anyone out and and tries to bully them. Let me let Wayne before he's attacked okay, first. Let me let Wayne respond to that. Go ahead, Wayne. He stepped up to the podium and acted like he was short, like Bloomberg. I mean, come on, tell me that's not bullying. Well, Bloomberg called him out well before that as well. Obviously, that's going to take place. Oh, I have to agree to disagree on that one. But as far as the the Melania thing. I have to disagree, um, only because it, it. Even if it was Michelle, they would have said the same thing. Hey, you need to move on with your life. I understand this is a horrible thing, but let's be vigilant. Let's wash our hands. Live your life. Moving Go okay, by. living your life is one thing. Uh, if you're going to the supermarket or going out to dinner with friends or going to see a show, I completely agree with you. We're talking about the first lady. Bragging, by the way, she hasn't spent one dollar, by the way, for this thing. Bragging and gloating about her new stupid tennis pavilion within 24 hours after people lost their lives in this horrible tornado and among this coronavirus scare. I'm telling you, the timing of it is terrible and it's wrong. And uh, Wayne, I guess I'll have to leave it at that, my friend. Yeah, we'll have to agree to disagree on that. All right, no problem, Wayne. I appreciate the phone call. Seven zero two two five seven five three nine six is the number to call again. Two five seven five three nine six. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen gentlemen but days after uh, a number of people lost their lives in this horrific tornado lives lost forever and during this coronavirus scare i don't want to see the first lady talking about her stupid tennis pavilion i'm sorry i just don't i think it's completely inappropriate and it's wrong why should i be shocked though 
that somebody in the Trump administration is talking about them. Look at the last yeah, few you, days. You would prefer that it was just all negative all the time. Uh, no, that's, no, no positive that's can ever be integrated. That's completely under ridiculous. Those circumstances. Now, that, how, is, how is that ridiculous? Ridi- okay, the do you ten, want me to explain why that's ridiculous? Is, is a positive in her uh, eyes, and uh, so she's showcasing here that. Would, uh, first of all, I never said talk about negative. Be negative. Well, that's that's what negative. I, Talk, talking uh, about no, talking you're not about letting me deaths, respond. Talking about deaths in a tornado. Talking about the coronavirus. Not only, and about, only talking about those two here, things okay. is staying with uh, the negative. Okay. but integrating the positive, to me, I don't have an all issue right, with that. So let me explain why I think you're wrong. First of all, if she flew out to Tennessee, if she flew out to where these tornadoes were, and she provided some comfort to the families who lost loved ones, that is not a negative. That is trying to be positive and being there for the families. That's number one. Number two, if she was going among communities and talking about coronavirus and talking about how we can help one another, what the symptoms are, how we can be more safe, that would not be a negative. That would be helping people. That would be comforting people. And that would be educating educating people. You don't have to be putting up pictures about a stupid tennis pavilion to be to only be positive. You can help people, okay? You can do that. After 59 people died on October 1 in Las Vegas, the president flew out to Las Vegas with Melania, met with a few of the people that were injured or seriously hurt, and they were in Las Vegas for a few hours and then they left. There are ways to comfort people and better ways to comfort people than to put up pictures about a stupid tennis pavilion. Heck, I don't even care if she's reading a book in front of kids. I'd rather have her do that than talk about her stupid tennis courts. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Again, that number, 257-5396. Let's go to Brady. Brady, you're next on the Vegas Take. What's up? What's up, Brady? Good morning, J.D. and Krusty. Hey, um, you got to start reading your Bible there, Brian. No, thank I mean, you. You're getting- you, you're getting way off on this pen stuff. I mean, I did gotta, read my Bible. Uh, thou shall not I mean, be an idiot named Brady and call into the Vegas take every day. It's passage 54. Read the Bible. That's my Bible. That's a terrible Bible, Brian. No, it's a great Bible, actually. Uh, thou shall not be a moron like Brady. Passage 55. I had to, I had to agree with Janice, though, and, and I thought it was really appropriate that she said you should quarantine your mouth and let JD speak a little bit more. Uh-huh. Maybe you should just pod your. Have like an endless Brady, do you have point. anything? Brady, I know you've waited 24 hours to make these remarks and memorize them, but do you have anything intelligent you'd like to talk to us about, like the coronavirus? Do you have anything? I want to know what Krusty's doing specifically for uh, uh, trying to go against this virus. What are you doing for yourself? What am I doing specifically personally yeah. for myself? Yeah, are you washing your hands before you date your drag queens or when you go to the library? First of all, are you homophobic? Do you have a problem with drag queens? Why no, would you not speak? A with well, that. why would you speak about them in a derogatory way? I'm just curious. I don't know. Oh well, I, I do because I you're a, because you're a homophobe and a racist. That's why. But I don't I'll still. Know. I thought you I'll were still, coming out of your mother's closet this week. I, I, I'll still answer your question. I'll still answer your question if you'd like me to. Well, are, you saying, um, are you saying derogatory because they're associated with you going on a date? No, I mean like you guys get so offended because uh, Donald Trump said he's a bully because he said he's a small mini me. How 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 wimpy are you, people? I don't even know what you're. Yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, you asked me a question, so I will answer your question. Okay, I am. I am, uh, and I'll answer. I'll answer it in a serious way, even though you're speaking derogatory terms about you know drag queens. Uh, no, I've never dated a drag queen before, but that has nothing to do with this conversation. Uh, yes, I think you need to be vigilant. You need to wash your hands as much as possible. I think using hand sanitizer does help, and I haven't been shaking a lot of hands. I've been doing the fist pump thing. So to answer your question seriously, Brady, that's exactly what I'm doing, and I'm not sure what that has to do with, date, with dating a drag queen. I have no idea why you would bring that up. The only thing I can think of is the fact that you're a homophobe and you're a racist. 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Kelly. Kelly, you are next up on the Vegas Take. Kelly, thanks for joining us. What's on your mind? Can we can we get to the phone calls? Can we go to Kelly? Thank you, Kelly. What's, uh, what's on your mind, Kelly? Hey, what's up, Kelly? Kelly, are you there? Kelly? Can you hear me? Yeah, Kelly, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say I agree with you that it was very arrogant of Michelle Obama to do that. However, Melania, 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 we're talking about Melania. No, 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 no. Who was the one who uh, posted pictures of tennis courts? Yeah, we're talking about Melania Trump. She just did that. Oh, I thought you were saying that Michelle Obama did that. So does that change? Does does that change your opinion? Uh, no, I don't think that it was appropriate either way. Okay, we but agree. I was just to say that yep. you know there's a history with Michelle Obama being arrogant, where not so with uh, Melania. 
Okay, well, we're, I mean, we're, you know, specifically, uh, Kelly, uh, I understand if you're not a Michelle Obama fan, but we're talking about Melania, with all due respect. And she right. put up put up these pictures of, of this tennis pavilion at a, at a very serious time in this country where a lot of people are freaking out, people are dying. And uh, I thought it was extremely inappropriate. So I understand if you don't like Michelle Obama, but uh, in this specific situation, I have zero respect for Melania Trump for a lot of different reasons. And what she did the other day was horrible judgment. Well, I think that um, I would be looking more for a pattern. So, you know, with um, with Melania as a history, she doesn't have a history of doing gaffes like that. I think that we all use poor judgment once in a while. But Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Well, if yeah. it was something on an ongoing basis, it would be a different I think story. she does have a history because she decided to marry Donald Trump, but I guess that would be horrible judgment for most people. But uh, listen, in, in, in all seriousness, the cyberbullying stuff, Great cause, right? We don't want any of our kids to be cyberbullied. We don't want people. But her own husband is the cyberbullier in chief. That is my problem with Melania. Well, if you look at what's going on right now, in all due respect, politically speaking, I mean, if you look at any of the debates that we've seen recently, there's mm-hmm. been a lot of mudslinging on both sides. So if you're going to say that about Trump, you're going right, to say fair that. Enough. Can no, you you me, can you, okay, fair enough. Can you name me? Can you? Okay, fair enough. And Biden actually benefited from it. That's the reason can why you all name these me, Can you name me a Democrat? Can you name me a Democrat on the stage or a prominent Democrat that has made fun of a Republican, a female Republican, and made fun of her looks or her dentures? Because Donald Trump did that a few weeks ago. I think Pelosi. I can tell you that I think Pelosi has said a lot of really criminally uh, terrible things about all kinds of people on the Republican side. Can you give me an example you know I mean? of a of a Democrat that has made fun of a female Republican based on looks? Biden. Doesn't he have a history of... Okay, Biden's not a female. Biden's not a female. Um... No, uh, no, you said made fun of made a female. Fun, okay, so what did Biden Biden's say about a... Okay, so what did male. Biden say about a female's looks in, in office? I mean, okay, well, how's this? Warren and Sanders on the political debate stage, uh, Warren went ahead and used that as a talking point about Sanders. Okay, but you're not answering my question. Can you name me... Oh, no, a, I am. Name me a Democrat that has made fun... Of a female's looks the way Donald Trump has. Bernie Sanders. What did Bernie Sanders say? Which female, which person in office, what exactly did he say? Well, I, I can't tell you specifically. I remember that Warren was on a debate stage, and I can't remember now if it was okay. Bernie. You know, Kelly, no. Kelly, don't feel bad about this. Brian, Brian is cherry-picking one specific situation no, listen, Kelly, I'm and, gonna... and leveraging that to support Absolutely. his point. The, the point is Nancy Pelosi has been attacking Donald Trump for years and Donald Trump attacking her based on her looks, was it in good taste? Of course not, but it wasn't bullying. He was attacked. He countered. He went lower than she did. He, he attacked something different mm. than she attacked on and him. And that's definitely and, not and, beneath and, the presidency and, and, and at all. And he's, I, th- that's fine. Beneath the presidency does, th- doesn't mean it's cyberbullying, Brian. Uh, yeah, right. And Press cyberbullying the... to me is a really big deal because a lot of these young kids that are on social media that are getting cyberbullied, they might, right. they might kill themselves. No, you're right. The a great example. A lot of shootings that take place mm-hmm. with these young kids are because they've been cyberbullied for a long time mm-hmm. in their school systems. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned the fact that, okay, Melania Trump and Donald Trump, they visited Vegas after that you know, horrific shooting. That was the worst shooting in the history of the United States. Well, they took 90 Torna- minutes. Tornadoes happen in the United States and have happened in the United States for hundreds of years. They happen all over the country, mm-hmm. and they have for a long time. Mm-hmm. The shooting in Las Vegas was totally unprecedented. And there's a reason why I brought that up. I don't think you understood why I brought that I told, up. I brought, I, I I brought that no, up because I, I, they, you brought it because it's, they it's didn't support, even spend, it, support, it supports your point that they, you that they decided to cherry pick or they, they decided to come to Las Vegas quickly, because Donald Trump has a Trump Tower, and there's not a Trump Tower quickly, in Tennessee. Quickly, let me just say this. Uh, when that. the president was campaigning for his own good, he stayed in Las Vegas for a week. When we lost 59 people in the shooting, he stayed in Las Vegas for two hours. What does that tell you about Donald Trump? 702-257-5396. Let's go to Stanley. Stanley, you are next up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Stanley? Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing? I appreciate yeah. you guys. Uh, Brian, I do agree with you about Milani or anybody that when something, some some big thing goes on, you know, like, you know, with death and things like that. Sure. It's a place and time to, exactly. to post or do something like that. That's with anybody. Exactly. I mean, that's with anybody. Sure. And another question, um, do you notice that when you ask a question about Donald Trump or mm-hmm. – and it's not just even Donald Trump supporters. Just when you ask a question about Donald Trump, 
the question never gets answered. It's like a diversion. Very true. You know? Very it's true. Always, I mean, you guys can agree with me. That's what anybody you watch on TV or hear somebody talking in conversation on the street. They Listen, never answer Stanley, it. it's like, a perfect example of, and I'm glad you brought that up, when somebody just called up a few callers ago and said, oh, you know, the president does this on Twitter, he had to, but all the Democrats do it too. And then I say, Okay, President Trump made after Nancy Pelosi, went after her looks, went after her dentures. Can you please right. name me a prominent Democrat that has gone after a female Republican and gone after her looks? She couldn't right. do it. Yeah, that, I think that was Kelly. I wrote her, num- her name down. <laughs> um, I was just, you know, she, you was talking about Melania. She right. calls up and talks about, talking about Michelle. About Michelle Obama. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like that yeah. wasn't the question. You, first, you got to close your mouth and listen. And then if you don't understand, ask the question, mm-hmm. I'll write it down. Well, that's, that's true. That's all I have to say in about a perfect, that. In a but perfect I, world, Stanley, I agree. Well, hey. the, re- the reason that she yeah, brought up I Michelle Obama is because— You guys keep doing what you're doing. Thank hey, you, th- Stanley. Thanks a lot, Stanley. Appreciate the, it. The, the reason she brought up Michelle Obama is because Brian actually brought up Michelle Obama and said that if she was doing the same thing that Melania Trump was doing, the Republicans would have an outrage. Oh, she has, and she hasn't, and though. That's, and that's why let's, she let's, brought up Michelle Obama. She hasn't, So though. it wasn't just out of, it wasn't what it speaking, wasn't even what about ism Brian actually brought it up. Speaking of Michelle, we have Michelle on the line. Uh, thank you for calling in, Michelle. Uh What's on your mind? Hey, what's up, Michelle? Hey, hey, good morning. Um, it's meteorologist Michelle. The weather sucks today. <laughs> Michelle, anyway, yeah, that's I, terrible. what I'd like to say about President Trump, yes. and I am a Trump supporter, I would like him to speak to us directly, not not a press conference, but speak to the public, the American people. I agree. Daily, daily, because too many things are happening right now. So we need a daily update. He does, he does that every day. Need assurance. It's called his Twitter page. Yeah, it's called going he after does that others every day on Twitter. Yeah, he's he's doing it from Michelle. I agree with you. By the way, it wouldn't it wouldn't that? But Michelle, wouldn't that be a moment of leadership if he did do that? Wouldn't that help it would him? Be, it would be. It's what he should do. So I I'm I'm troubled that he's not doing it. Uh, with what's happening with the crude oil. The Saudi Arabia people and, and the Russians, right? They're, they're having a, a oil war, which is going to affect things, the, the stock market, and of course the virus, the virus that's going around. Michelle, globally. let me tell you something. If 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 uh, Donald Trump did a heart to heart with the American people and it wasn't a press conference, I I, I completely one hundred percent agree with you, Michelle. And it's good to hear from you. I've only got about thirty seconds for Chris. Chris, I apologize. I'm up against a hard break. You're, you're, the floor is yours, my friend. Go ahead. Hey, what's up, Chris? No, I'll, I'll be quick. Uh, I got one for you. Joe Biden. He called that girl a lying, dog-faced pony soldier. Yes, he so did. There you go. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So that, that was all. I just wanted to give you uh, – And we uh, – no, and, and Chris, I'll respond to that, and I appreciate the phone call, and that is fair. We had uh, Joe Biden's wife on the line a few weeks ago. Uh, I don't – he should not have said that. It was completely wrong. Uh, he made the excuse that, yes, it was from a movie – uh, he made the excuse that, you know, it wasn't uh, wasn't malicious. And by the way, I don't think Joe Biden said that when he called her a dog face pony liar or whatever that was. I don't think he was. I, I really don't think he was commenting on her looks. He doesn't have a history of attacking women based on looks. Guess who does? Donald Trump. When you make fun of somebody's dentures, it wasn't a line from a movie. It was attacking Nancy Pelosi based on her looks. Two completely different things. And while I disagree with the verbiage of what Joe Biden used, you cannot compare the two. Coming up next, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, It's going to be interesting anyway. Juanita Broderick. She is the woman who accused Bill Clinton of rape back in 1998. She has a book out. She's going to talk about her experiences. And now why uh, Republicans and Democrats who didn't believe her back in the day, particularly many Democrats, now they're starting to believe her story. We will certainly get to that coming up next. Juanita Broderick will be joining us. This is the Vegas Take right here on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, KDON.